Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Foundations meta game. Today I'm going to try to answer the question, is Monogreen finally a playable archetype in standard again? And hopefully with the help of Lenor Elves we'll finally get there. This one drop is now back in standard and is a huge deal, a way to cast our three drops on turn two already, and just a way to get ahead of mana as quickly as possible. And one of the exciting three drops we now get to play includes Mossborn Hydra from Foundations. Starts out as just a 1-1 trampler with a single plus one plus one counter, but with Landfall we get to double the number of counters on it, so that can get out of hand very quickly, especially if we can enable a Landfall several times in the same turn, which we can do with some of our ramp cards, such as Glimpse the Core, just putting an additional forest on the battlefield. We also have a Fetch Land in our mana base, which is here just for the Landfall purposes, helping us enable the Hydra and some of our other landfall cards twice, but we also have Awaken the Woods, which allows us to create X11 green forest dried land creature tokens, so that's quite a mouthful. So every one of those creatures will be able to tap for a green mana. They also count as lands entering the battlefield, enabling landfall, and they're also forests, which is relevant for the Bloomkin, which gets plus one plus one for each forest we control. Can also maybe disguise it for three mana and then flip it face up for five, allowing us to ramp, finding two more forest cards, one in hand, one on the battlefield. And we're also running the combo of Awaken the Woods alongside Nissa, Ascended Animist, which we can cast for 5 mana and 4 life, 6 mana and 2 life, or ideally just for 7 mana, so it enters with all 7 loyalty counters, and we could immediately use the minus 7 ultimate ability, giving our creatures plus 1 plus 1 for each forest we control, as well as trample. So now every one of those Dryad tokens also contributes towards the minus 7 ultimate, so a large Awaken the Woods will often set up a lethal Nissa on the following turn which is awesome. And then if we have, let's say, a Mossborn Hydra in play, cast Awaken the Woods for X equals 4, now we get to double the Hydra's power 4 times, which will likely get it above a lethal. So that's kind of our game plan. And then rounding out the deck, we've got a few more landfall cards. Bristly Bill giving us a single plus one counter whenever a land enters, but for five mana we could also double the number of plus one counters on each creature we control. So quite synergistic with a Mossborn Hydra, as we can maybe put the counter from Bristly Bill on the Hydra with a landfall trigger before doubling it with the Hydra, so we get even more value out of it. And then of course a five mana ability can also be quite deadly. And then we've got a Nissa Resurgent Animist. This is just a creature, but with Landfall generates additional mana. And if we enabled it twice in one turn, we also get to find an additional Elf or Elemental and put it in hand. So it can find additional copies of itself, of Lenor Elves. The Bloomkin is an Elemental, and then the Hydra is also an Elemental that Nissa can find. So it can provide a ton of value. Also very synergistic with Awaken the Woods, giving us a lot of mana in return, which we can then use to cast even more spells afterwards. And then we also have the Up the Beanstalk plus Overlord package. If we cast Up the Beanstalk we get to draw, and whenever we cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater we get to draw, so it will trigger off the Overlord even if we impend it for 3 mana, putting an everywhere land token in play, which also counts as a forest and can also enable landfall for us. And then maybe we have 5 mana and we just hard cast the Overlord instead, so it can uh, generate that everywhere token when it enters, and once again when it starts attacking. It's another great way to enable landfall several times in the same turn. And then, as we mentioned, the mana base 21 forest, since we want as many as possible for Bloomkin and Nissa, and then a Fabled Passage just to enable Landfall twice. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a Promising Hand. Elves sets up turn to Hydra, and then Overlord can provide more Landfall triggers. Opponent's blue-green. We'll see which variety. Archaeologist, I see, so it's a reanimator deck. Well, gotta hope they don't have a lot of removal. Because this Hydra is gonna get big. Hoping we pick up something to do besides Overlord, so I can maybe just cast it for 5 mana. Instead of needing to impend. Opponent's got a Prankster to keep milling. And next turn they will be able to take out... My Hydra, it seems. Awaken the Woods was a nice draw. So we will get a decent hit in. So yeah, next turn this Hydra would certainly be lethal if we go Land Overlord. That would go up to a 32 Trampler. Hmm. 
And our opponent gets to take out the Hydra. And then next turn, potentially, the Overlord as well. They did find a Squirming Emergence. And I guess they have triple blue, so if they have Reenact a Crime, they can bring back one with a Multiverse and potentially combo off from there. They're likely playing Omniscience as well. One with a Multiverse is 8 mana, so Emergence can get it back right now, whereas Omniscience would require a few more permanents. Alright, so it's going to be a go for the throat. Opponent hangs on to Bitter Triumph. Doesn't have double black. And this has a nice pickup. So now I can cast Overlord. That's going to soak up another removal spell next turn from maybe Founding getting it back. Although I guess it would go for Squirming Emergence, one with a Multiverse, and then play a removal spell for free. But either way, it sets up Nissa to overrun for lethal on the following turn. If I cast it now, my creatures would be tapped, so that's not too helpful. And no attacks. So we would have eight forests in play. So as long as two creatures can attack, that's probably good enough. But yeah, there's Emergence for one with a Multiverse. They get one free spell. And hopefully it's nothing too devastating. Ooh, Volgavoth. Well, if it's just Volgavoth, that's probably still beatable. Since we can overrun, have three attackers. Sadly, we don't get the extra land from Overlord counting towards the overrun. But I guess we can do it all over again next turn if needed. And then the Dryad's a little bit more valuable than Lenor Elves. So just big enough to at least trade for Volgavoth. So opponent will have to trade it away. But they should survive. And then they still have a one with a multiverse in play. Nessa could blow it up, but not until next turn. So they're at two. So if they cast Bitter Triumph, they'll have to discard. Lanor Wastes also costing them one life. So I'm hoping we can just run it back and overrun again next turn. So yeah, our hand was pretty good. We had the turn two Hydra. Awaken the Woods and even double Nissa. But our opponent's hand was also quite powerful. And another Squirming Emergence gets back Volgavoth. So they still have Bitter Triumph available. Yeah, that's not ideal. Although next turn we'll have a bunch more forests available. Opponent found a go for the throat, so they can use that instead. And then Fabled Passage doesn't really make a difference. Alright. Take two. Go for the Throat Overlord. And then we still have 7, 8, 9, 10. Give it a team plus 10 plus 10. So that's just enough even if they block. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is... functional. Would love to pick up another land. And then we've got multiple ways to enable landfall twice on Nissa. Opponent on a teamer deck, maybe otters. As we see, a trainer. Opponent's got bound spells. For now, I'm afraid we just have to glimpse. So if I draw a land, I can maybe play Nissa, play a land, play a 2-drop. To have a slightly more efficient turn. If not, we'll just impend the Overlord. Yeah, let's try it. And then Bloomkin versus Bristly Bill. Bill could die more easily to a burn spell if we play it now. So, yeah, close call. I guess it is Bloomkin, and then if I draw a land next turn... 
I can either cast Overlord or go Bill, play a land, and then we can still impend an Overlord at the very least. Opponent's got the Valley Floodcaller, that's the scary card. We already know they have a Bound spell, so yeah, they can potentially go off here. Slide of Hand for starters. They can also play their Sorceries at instant speed. Maybe a limited in how much blue mana they have. Up the Beanstalk, draws a card. Also quite synergistic with this town ain't big enough. And Torja Tower sacking Beanstalk to take out Nissa and hit us for 9. Don't have a good block. Alright, so we're definitely on the back foot here. Hoping for a land so we can cast an Overlord. Fabled Passage. So once again I have the option of playing Bristly Bill and Impend Overlord and get three Landfall Triggers. Yeah, that might be worth it. And then counter. Since they have a bound spell, may as well put it on Bill itself. Are we in a position to attack, perhaps? Yeah, maybe it is worth it, since we are potentially setting up Nissa for lethal next turn. So I could see Count from Bloomkin attack. And then if we draw another land, we can just overrun with Nissa, even with a single creature we might get there. Right, opponent passes, and Beanstalk the draw. So I'll just cast Overlord now. Just to get on the board, opponent's got a bound spell anyway. And then maybe just send in the Bloomkin, which may or may not get bounced. Ah, that's fine. So next turn I could overrun with Nissa, which right now is plus seven plus seven, but this Valley Floodcaller still cannot be underestimated. Replace Trainer, finds another bound spell. Now a sleight of hand, so they're looking for blue mana. Our opponent's likely playing with Enduring Vitality, which lets them make a lot of mana in combination with Floodcaller to kind of storm off, but they haven't been able to assemble that combo yet. And then especially once they find the blue talent making an Otter token, they can set up this loop. Opponent now passes with their Bound spell available, so if I were to overrun, only one creature is gonna connect. They'll get additional toughness, but yeah, it is still potentially presenting lethal. So it might be worth a try. Because I would get plus 8 plus 8. So that's 14. Plus trample, so it's not like they can chump and then bounce. So then... Yeah, if they have to chump with a flood caller, that's a win. So I think we go for it. So they are likely bouncing Bill. Maybe they let us trigger the Overlord. Our opponent reconsiders their block. Maybe bouncing the Flood Caller instead of the Trainer just to soak up some damage from Bill. But then they'll have to replay the Trainer, or rather the Flood Caller, before they can combo off. So then we shouldn't be in too much danger next turn. But our opponent's at 1, so game's not over yet. And then now we can play Beanstalk before redeploying the Overlord, perhaps. So main phase Floodcaller. 
They might have a way to give it haste as well, with the Song of Tottentons is sometimes played in these decks. Also can't forget about Bill's activated ability, although it still lack Trample, so probably won't be using it next turn. Right, it's going to be a Questing Druid next. Finding a Fight Spell, which is not going to work, and then Storm Chaser's Talent. Which they can level up to get a spell back out of the graveyard. If it's this town in big enough, they can use it to bounce the talent, rinse and repeat. If you've got a Flot Caller and a uh, Enduring Vitality, but yeah, opponent could not quite assemble their combo in time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands would not mind drawing an additional land or two. Then we've got Bill and Nissa both synergizing with Landfall. Hopefully can hold Fabled Passage. Glimpse can ramp a bit more. But overall it feels a little bit clunky. Especially if we don't draw land right away. And there's also no top ends to really top off our curve with. So maybe it is worth the mulligan. Okay, I think this is a little bit better. Awaken the Woods is good with Bill, so I think we just keep one of them. And then still hoping for land 3, but now Beanstalk into Overlord's a good curve. Facing the red white burn deck, it seems. Hydra could give us a win condition that can close out the game very quickly, but of course starts out pretty small within burn range. So... What's our sequencing gonna look like? Could also start with Bill, if that takes a removal spell out of the equation, it's not a bad thing. But it can also synergize with the Hydra, or we can Beanstalk first. But against a burn deck, I'm more worried about dying before I can deploy all my cards, as opposed to necessarily playing the card advantage game. So I'll try Bill first. Right, and now a Screaming Nemesis, that's a scary card. It's us for three. All right, Hydra it is, I guess. Counter on build for now. And then are we just trying to straight up outrace the Nemesis? Or do we keep Bill back to block? Bill would help out big time with growing the Hydra. So maybe I do try and race here. Although it's not a race for necessarily winning. If I draw land, then we're maybe in good shape. But I'm sure opponent can also just play some burn spells to respond. But no, opponent is just going face and needed a land here. So now what's the best I can do? Just overlords, get a counter from build and double with Hydra, but that's not nearly enough. Yeah, if we found a land, we can do the math. I would have gotten counter from Bill, put it on Hydra double up to four, and then play Awaken for two, which again, two more counters from Bill puts it to six, double to 12, double to 24, would have been lethal. So yeah, just needed a land here. Now we're probably dead. If our opponent has anything left in hand. Yeah, keeping Bill back to block the Screaming Nemesis doesn't necessarily work out, so... Their hand needs to literally be all lanes. And a Boris Charm will close it out. But yeah, we did the math. With a land, Awaken the Woods would have been lethal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. Turn 1 Elves sets up turn 2 Mossborn Hydra. And we've got some additional ramp to give it more counters. If our opponent's got removal for the elves, we can maybe start with a beanstalk. Looks like maybe a rabbit deck. Okay, so we'll stick to the plan. Overlord, another good pickup. I'm still tempted to go beanstalk plus glimpse first and then hard cast Overlord. So we also get to draw an additional card of beanstalk. And we get more lands to grow the hydra. And we should be able to outgrow the rabbit deck with the Hydra. So unless they've got removal, I'm lacking my chances. But our opponent's off to a decent start as well. So yeah, play lanes. 
and maybe Beanstalk. Is there any two drop I could draw here that would change my play? Nah, maybe we'll thin out the deck first, since I don't necessarily want to draw another land. And then Hydra can attack. And then next turn between land and overlords, we'll get this up to a 16-16, and now Fabled Passage means we could easily be attacking for lethal. So yeah, hoping they don't have interaction. We're at 11. And our opponent passes, so that's a little bit more concerning. I think the play is still Overlord here. And that also sets up Nissa to ultimate next turn, in case the Hydra doesn't get there. And our opponent explodes, alright, so 32-32 Hydra is good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Hoping for a fourth land, so we can play Nissa into Awaken the Woods for at least X equals 2. And keep the ball rolling. Put on blue-white with turn 1 Mockingbird. So not exactly sure what to make of it. Hoping Nissa resolves. Overlord now also an option, but Nissa has a little bit more upside. That opponent did have a counter spell. So it is a bird deck. Kind of playing draw go. And now Empyrean Eagle, I guess, a good incentive to play this strategy. Fable Passage would have been awesome with uh, Creature Nissa. Now we're maybe looking at Awaken the Woods for two. Or we can still impend an Overlord. If I Awaken the Woods for two, next turn we have six forests. So we're getting close to a powerful Nissa Overrun. But yeah, either way it would help us cast Overlord. And then maybe the turn after we can set up Nissa, assuming there's no counter spells. And this will also grow the Bloomkin. But yeah, imagine if we still had our Nissa in play, then Fable Passage is plus two mana. So then we can awaken for X equals four instead. And then with the four mana from the Dryads, we could still play Bloomkin or Impend Overlord. We did draw lands, so I can cast Nissa. While the coast is clear, would be plus 7 plus 7, so a 14 trampling flourishing bloomkin. They can put 7 in front, fall to 1, but lose both creatures. Yeah, I think that's a fine exchange. And our opponent's just gonna scoop it up, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is somewhat slow, but it is powerful. Of course, drawing a Helenor Elves on turn one would be ideal. Bloomkin gives us something else to do early. And then additional lands, especially Fabled Passage, would be a great pickup. Seem to be up against Mono Black. Could have been a reason not to play Bloomkin when it's still in range of cutdown. Although Hydra would also die to a cutdown, unless we can put a bunch of counters on it right away. So baiting one out may not be all that bad. And then in this matchup, if we can resolve a large Awaken the Woods and follow that up with Anissa, we can set up lethal. But keeping both pieces in hand in the face of some discard spells could be tricky. Having Anissa in play when we cast Awaken the Woods would also be nice, because then we can make a bunch of mana with it. And Anoint with Affliction would have answered any of our creatures here. So the game goes on. Cavern names Phyrexian, and Unstoppable Slasher potentially threatening the Bloodletter combo kill. But yeah, I think we're just at a point where if they have it, they have it. Playing Nissa to block Slasher would be our best play in the event of a Bloodletter, but then we're losing Nissa, opponent eventually gets Slasher back. Not a great long-term plan, 
So I think it is just Hydra, hope they don't have it. And then next turn I could go Nissa, play a land, enable landfall, play a glimpse, enable landfall, enable Nissa. But opponent's got the combo. So yeah, now I'm forced to jump just to stay alive, which is pretty ugly. So this is unlikely a game we're winning. Did find a replacement Hydra at least. And now Nissa could technically block Slasher, but I'm sure they'll have another removal spell. They don't, so can block at least. Still hoping for a land off the top. It's gonna be the Annex, also pretty good with Blood Letter in play. And Awaken the Woods. Can cast one for X equals three. Yeah, that might be our best play here, since we can't really double spell alongside Nissa or Hydra. And then we can do some math here. Let's say we do draw a land next turn, play Nissa tapping one Dryad. Then I'll have eight forests, or rather nine forests. And then with two creatures attacking, that would have been 20 damage, but Ponon takes Nissa with a Duress. So yeah, even 20 damage would not have been enough. Opponent's got a second Annex now. So the damage is adding up quickly. And in fact, we're just dead to a double Annex trigger. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems okay. Turn one Elves. Turn two, we can disguise the Bloomkin. And then... Maybe turn four... Flip it face up. Might find something else to do in the meantime. Bone onto red green. So the elves might eat a removal spell. In which case I'm probably just casting Bloomkin. Yeah, sure. Got a decent number of three mana plays we could draw. Up the Beanstalk. Typically don't see that alongside Burst Lightning. And now I suppose we could Disguise. Hit you for three. Keep Fabled Passage in hand for as long as possible to enable Landfall twice. Cavern names Avatar. Fair enough, so they're on the Overlord build. This might be a Smuggler Surprise deck. Trying to cheat in Calamity with Overlord. And this one was a nice draw. So we can play it. Fabled Passage to enable Nissa twice. Or we can save that to maybe deploy Nissa Planeswalker next turn, assuming Nissa survives. Although if we find a Lenor Elves or another Bloomkin or even the Hydra, I would still be able to play it. So everything except another Nissa basically would be a fine pickup. All right, found another Nissa. So next turn to play might be to flip up Bloomkin, and then wait a little bit longer on Nissa Ascended Animist, or we could just run it out and start blowing up enchantments. This one name is Dragon, so we might see Terror of the Peaks, or another Overlord. So yeah, this one's a bit more tempting to blow up with Nissa, And then I can still play Lenor Elves alongside it. Or I can play Nissa with additional loyalty. Interesting decision. And yeah, if we're playing this, we're probably just going to be minusing this one a bunch to destroy enchantments. So I don't need it to have a lot of loyalty. And then setting up the second Nissa might be better. So now with the lands, we're looking at the minus seven. Opponent's gonna take out Nissa, that's fine. The resistance is greater than expected. And another Overlord. So that's gonna take out 
Resurgent Animus, most likely. And Glimpse the draw. So once again, could play Nissan to blow up the Overlord. But then we're not setting up the Overrun. So instead, what if I play Nissa, Glimpse, still won't be able to flip up the Bloomkin, which is kind of a play I'm interested in making. If I flip it up now, then I'll still have a land to play. But yeah, we're missing out on all the Nissa landfall triggers. But yeah, I guess it does set up lethal next turn, assuming there's no Calamity coming down. So I think that's the move. Their opponent doesn't have to trump. But next turn we can give the team plus eight, plus eight, and trample. So unless they can win the game here with a smuggler surprise or calamity, we should be good to go. Because then we can trample over double overlord. Opponent just drawing some cards. So I guess worst case scenario, they can impend another red overlord and finish off the bloomkin but no opponent just with four copies of up the beanstalk so now best they can do is i guess another torture tower if they have red mana i'll land our elves down but now animus is lethal whether we destroy the overlord or overrun doesn't matter This is more exciting. And attack. So yeah, it was an interesting back and forth. But Bloomkin seals the deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with uh, Promising Hands. Lunar Elves sets up either turn to Nissa or Mossborn Hydra, which are both great to get going early. Would love to draw another land, but Poon seems to have the cut down anyways. Nope, duress. Takes our glimpse. And then I think we go for Hydra. Can always play Nissa and enable landfall the same turn we play it. If they had cut down, they would have taken out elves. So if they have removal for Hydra, it should be a two mana answer. And uh, yeah, I can play Nissa, play a land, enable landfall, but I wouldn't be doing anything with it. So I could also just attack with the Lunar Elves now, unless our opponent's got some flash creature to get in the way, because the Elves does help maybe cast Overlord. I guess I'll see first if Nissa resolves. Go to attacker, so yeah, Fairy Mastermind is on my mind. Maybe a reason not to attack yet, because I don't want to trade the Hydra for it. And there it is. So next turn we can Hardcast Overlord, which would be pretty good. And our opponent just tapping out for the Annex. Not only do we get to grow the Hydra twice, but we also get to enable Nissa to find another Alpha Elemental. And it's going to be another Hydra, which I cannot cast. Attack all out. And our opponent's pretty far behind. Falls to six, so even if they answer Hydra, they're still taking lethal. So yeah, the combination of both having a Lunar Elves and being on the play put us miles ahead. Alright, they did have the answer, so if they have another removal spell for Overlord, we still have a game. In the meantime, it's gonna be Hydra. And yeah, looks like they do have an answer for the Overlord. So yeah, we still have a game. Can hit for three. Opponent's at one, but if they make a demon, they go back up to three. So then I would need a way to enable landfall to still attack for lethal here. 
So any land or way to find a land would be good enough. Alright, land will do. So now we've got a 4-4 Hydra. Attack all out, and that'll do it. So yeah, I ended up being super close in the end. But I'm glad we still took it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is slow, but it does have the Awaken the Woods plus Nissa combo. Although we don't have any ramp before turn 3, and we're on the draw. So this might just be a little bit too slow on the draw. Yeah, it is tempting, but there's probably not too many games where we get to turn 5 or 6 without already facing lethal. Alright, this is a slight improvement. So we can go Beanstalk into Overlord draw a bunch. Probably don't need the Awaken here, but I could see Nissa coming in handy, especially alongside Overlord. Double planes and carrot cakes. So it is a white tokens deck. In this matchup, Nissa actually would have been awesome, since our opponent is giving us time to set up. By that I mean Planeswalker Nissa. Creature Nissa still good if we can get value. But our Planeswalker is how we kind of go over the top. Opponents got their card draw engine in place. And probably just go for Overlord. And then next turn I can play Nissa, play Land and Glimpse, which finds us another L4 Elemental. Or now we can hard cast another Overlord. Opponent is on the more aggressive side of things with Toby. So yeah, casting the Overlord is maybe not a bad idea. Just to get a larger creature in play. Likely gets removed. So that's the argument for maybe playing Nissa first anyway. And then if we find a Lenor Elves of the ability, I can still play it. And I guess a Bloomkin would also work. Alright, Lenor Elves it is. And then next turn we can, even if they remove Nissa, play another one plus an Overlord in the same turn, which also enables the ability again. Caretaker's Talent can draw them even more cards. And then sure we'll block the Innocence. Take four. And then stick to the plan. Possible they have a removal spell available, or they just want to sack Carrot Cake to draw two more. Another Overlord. We can still run out. Not sure if the opponent's still playing Sunfall, despite having Enduring Innocence. It would be pretty painful here. And yeah, we're just hoping for Nissa Planeswalker to overrun for the win. Or a Mossborn Hydra, which we can quickly grow. Does Nissa attack? Sure. That opponent is going to make a knight. And a double block. We'll take out Nissa, but we've got a backup. So yeah, Nissa Planeswalker at any point with two or three creatures in play is likely lethal. Opponents tapped out, but they will start growing their own creatures now with Virtue. Ooh, Mossborn Hydra, that's a good pickup. So I can play Nissa, play Hydra. Play a land and glimpse, and then the Hydra is going to grow once the Overlords attack as well. But we are potentially vulnerable to a sweeper still. And 
and spot removal on Hydra also sets us back. Opponent's happy to trade. Pass a turn. And yeah, there's a Sunfall, what's to be expected. So their opponent gets to draw. And now we're in trouble. So don't have much going on. Opponent can animate their Incubator and then likely attack for lethal. Any reason to play Nissa? If I draw Nissa Planeswalker, it's no longer a lethal attack. I guess I could technically block the Carrot Cake token if they don't level up talent all the way. And I'll hang on to Nissa until we can maybe enable it twice. So yeah, Sunfall, a reason not to block Enduring Innocence, so it stays in play and gets exiled. But I also didn't want to take two damage over and over. So if they animate Incubator, level up Talents, we are taking 7 plus 4, 11, so we're at 1. But I can't think of any top deck that saves me. Maybe an Awake in the Woods, making a bunch of tokens. And Bloomkin is pretty large. So, can disguise it. Play Nissa, play Lanes. And turn this face up. Which will find another land, enabling Nissa. And find a Hydra, which we can play. Alright, I mean, that was about as good as it could be for us. But any uh, other token here or removals game. And our opponent had a get lost, so. Now we're gonna have to double chump. And that should be game. Alright, too bad. Opponent got their card draw engines going early. Our first opening hand might have worked out a little bit better in this matchup. But against aggro, we would have been a little too slow. And then, of course, Sunfall cleaned up nicely. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands got potential. And do we hang on to Fabled Passage? Given that we have so many two drops, I think it's fine since. Either we draw land and it's untapped anyway. Or we'll play turn 3 alongside another 2-drop. Against turn 1 Swamp, I guess it is reasonable to wait on Bloomkin until it survives cut down and play it as a 3-3 three, three at the very least. Now we've got a dream start of Beanstalk into Overlord. Nowadays, I guess, uh, with Helenor Elves, there's a lot of dream starts can potentially be attacking for 200 plus damage on turn 4 already if we start with Lenor Elves, Hydra, and then some combination of Fabled Passage and additional ramp spells. That takes Overlord, so now probably just disguising the Bloomkin. Edict is a perfect answer to the Ward 2. So yeah, opponent's got some good answers, but now Hydra, an exciting pickup. Do I play it out right now? With Awaken the Woods in hand, it is threatening lethal, but given that our opponent hasn't drawn lanes, their hand must have more interaction, so it's unlikely that Hydra into Awaken the Woods is going to happen. So instead, we can maybe play it slow, go with a disguised Bloomkin, which is harder for the opponent to interact with. And then play Hydra, immediately grow it so it doesn't easily die to a cutdown, for instance. My opponent's got the Slasher plus Bloodletter combo lined up, it seems. So, now what? Can still make Hydra 3-3. Three, three. And then maybe wait on fetching, in case I find another Landfall card. Although, does that make any sense? Probably not, because I would still probably go for Awaken the Woods anyway. Alright, 
pass it back and then awaken the woods for three is potentially pretty good here also sets up nissa so if they have removal for hydra it's not necessarily a disaster that opponent did have the blood letter combo so i will have to block and yeah i guess bloomkin goes A land was a good pickup, so now we should have lethal awaken for x equals 4. Should be more than enough. Alright, so we got to see this new mono green ramp deck in action. And yeah, Lanor Elves definitely a very important addition for the archetype. But Mossborn Hydra has also impressed me, assuming you get to untap with it once or twice, it can single-handedly win you the game. And then we're still playing the core package of Awaken the Woods alongside Nyssa, which has been winning a lot of games for these green ramp decks for a long time, so it's no different here. So yeah, overall not a busted deck by any means, but if you were really looking forward to playing mono green in this upcoming standard, this might be a good place to start. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.